Good morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. And today I'd like to show you what I did with this Goodwill find. And it's just one of those pressed cardboard or pressed wood tables that used to be all over the place. And I painted it with some chalk paint and did a transfer over it and turned it into this. And even though I am working on this smaller tabletop, you can follow these instructions for any piece of furniture. I always like to mention that it's a great, great idea to start out on something smaller first before you take on a large project so you can experiment and learn your own things along the way. So I took this table outside. It's just a very low humidity, warm day out there today. And I'm going to cover the whole surface with chalk paint. You may have your favorite, I'm sorry, that's out of shot. That is the Martha Stewart paint called Seashell. And I'll have links to all of these supplies on my website. I am using this particular type of brush because I'm working in a crisscross motion when I paint and that just leaves kind of an aged finish on it. And I found that the chalk paint is absolutely the best paint to use underneath transfers. You can use an acrylic paint but it really stands out on the chalk paint and the chalk paint is very flat and absorbent. So I'm going to finish painting this whole table, the top and now the legs, and then I'm going to measure the surface of my table. Now that my surface is dry, I'm taking my tape measure and I'm measuring the size that I'm going to need for my transfer. Now you're going to go to a site called blockposters.com. Blockposters.com is a free site and I know this might look a little complicated. It really is not. Uh, it wasn't intimidating. The first time I tried it, I was able to do it and I didn't have any problems. But I will ask that you keep all of your questions regarding the block poster issues uh, with blockposter.com. They're very good at getting back to you. I'll help you with any other questions you may have about this project though. And you'll also notice there is an image on here that says blockposters.com for or it's got this icon on here you can pay five dollars to print this out without that and there's also some other benefits to paying the five dollars so I went over to Pinterest and I did a search for free printable clock faces or free clock faces and printed this out. Now I saved it in reverse. You wouldn't have to if you're doing something like this kettle here. If you're doing anything with writing or numbers on it though, you do need to flip the image. Or you can use any image already on your computer. I am using a laser printer which is waterproof and I want to show you a few things. When this prints out on your computer after you've put it through the block poster site you're going to get a cover page and you're going to get however many sheets because you can tell it you may want five or six sheets of paper you may only want four. I told it that I wanted the four sheets of paper and what I did was I put the papers together and I noticed that there is a little bit of a border between the spaces. So I decided to take my paper cutter and cut those borders off. I will say this, block poster does allow you to eliminate the borders and they said it's really easy, here's how you do it and they walk you through the steps. To be honest, I got a little confused and I'm pretty impatient and I said I, I can't do this I'm just going to cut the borders off <laughs> so that's what I did and I'll show you how I rectified that so I cut these borders off right here and even along the top there because I wanted a nice consistent pattern and then what I did was I took a matte gel medium and a thin painter's brush and I went over all of my images and you don't have to get this exact 
You just don't need to cover all of the paper. This is going to help us remove the paper later on. So I just went over all of my images and put these aside to dry. And once it's dry, I want to tape these pages together, but first I'm going to flip this over and line up my pages. So what I'm doing is taking low tack painters tape and I'm very carefully going to put this for now on the front just to make sure everything is in the right order. Then I'm going to flip it over. Once it's secure on the front and I can see where everything goes, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to add the low tack tape to the back. You don't want to use any other tape because that can tear the paper. You want to make sure you're just using this as kind of a place marker or a holder. And I'm going to do this with all four pages. Then remove the tape from the front. And I'm just about ready to apply the gel medium to my surface, but first I want to make sure that I have this centered correctly. So I'm taking a pencil and I am very lightly going to go around the area. Now I was trying to make sure I had the same measurement, about two inches around each side I can see where the end of the clock is. So I'm just measuring that, I'm centering it, and I'm going to use a pencil to outline where my papers are. So I'm very lightly going around these edges, and now I'm going to pull this away, and I'm going to apply my gel medium. However, you want to try to stay inside of those pencil marks. Try not to go over those pencil marks because we're going to erase them. I think I went over them a little bit with the gel medium and they were quite hard to remove. But lay the gel medium down and you want to get as smooth of a coat as you can. It doesn't necessarily have to be heavy, but you want to make sure it stays wet. Don't let any of the spots dry. And place your image down inside of those pencil marks and now you want to get out as many wrinkles as you can. You can use a brayer, which I suggest. A hard brayer works best. Your fingers, you can even use the back of a spoon and get out especially any wrinkles that are on any part of your image, which you can now start to see a little bit more. Now I wet this just to show you that you can see the images coming through clearly. But we want to remove the tape now. You don't need to wet it. Just remove your low tack tape. And in order to dry this, I put it outside on our front deck because it is there's such low humidity today and such bright sunshine. And it's about 90 degrees out there with very low humidity. A lot of times transfers take uh, an overnight period to dry, but I left this outside for a couple of hours. It all depends on when you're doing this, the humidity level. If it's wintertime and you can put it in a hot room, that's even better. If you'd like, you can just leave it overnight to be on the safe side. Now I'm going to start to remove all of this paper. So I took a wet washcloth, and what you want to do is wet the surface first and then start to wipe away any of the paper. This is a very messy project so there's a lot of paper that's going to come off and go on the floor. So wipe away as much of that paper as you can and put it aside to dry and you'll notice when it dries that there's still a little bit of paper left on here so we want to repeat this process and go back in again and wipe away with a wet rag any of the excess papers. Once this dried I wanted to age it a little bit so what I did was I took a nail file and I went in and I sanded some places but I wanted to show you, which I'm sure you notice, over on the, I'm just going in random areas here, over on the left side, there's, there's a gap, and there is also one up at the top. So I'm going to show you a quick fix for that in case it's happened to you also. 
taking a black magic marker and a plate for the curved surfaces and a ruler for the straight surfaces. And I'm just going to fill in any places where I might have some openings or gaps. Then I'm going to put my top coat over the whole surface. Because I want a vintage look, I'm going with the Liquitex Matte Varnish. Again, my website link is below. You can get the supplies there. You do want to make sure you erase those pencil marks before you put the top coat on. And here is how our completed table looks. And I am very happy with... I don't know what the camera is doing here. Sorry about that. I'm not moving. It's the camera that's jumping. It's really strange. So here's how our table looks. Here's how it looks out on my deck. Nice place to sit and have some tea or wine if it's been one of those days. And I also wanted to mention, next week's video is going to be decoupaging the glass, clear glass tabletop that goes over this. So if you want to tune in next week, I'll be doing the reverse image where the flowers will be facing up. And because this glass is transparent, we'll be able to see exactly where to put them as we decoupage on this. So guys, in the meantime, that is our project for the week. Thank you so much for subscribing. Those subscriptions keep us going over here when we make YouTube videos. Thank you, thank you again. And I have a Facebook page called Upcycle with Decoupage. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. And in the meantime, my friends, I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.